What do you guys think of when you hear the word Russia? As a Russian myself, it's always been really interesting to me to see how Westerners perceive and imagine Russia. And apparently a lot of Westerners think that Russia must be on another planet, because... Not that long ago I made this YouTube short right here about how Russians celebrate Christmas. Last Christmas, I give you my heart. And in that video I mentioned that in Russia for the entire holiday season you also have Mariah Carey, All I Want For Christmas Is You and Wham! Last Christmas Playing Everywhere. These songs are played in malls and shops all over Russia ad nauseum, and I got a few interesting comments. Goddamn, gotta respect the fact that Mariah Carey is one of the only things uniting the US and Russia. This seems very Western influenced. Are Mariah Carey and Wham really played in Russia these days? It confuses me, especially since George Michael was gay. And I'm gonna be honest guys, these comments really surprised me, because I couldn't even imagine that a Westerner might think that Russia is like too closed off, or is too anti-Western to play Mariah Carey or Wham! Last Christmas. But in fact, we do, and that's not the only thing. You can also hear Let It Snow, you know, or It's Beginning to Look a Lot Like Christmas, Jingle Bells, etc. All of this Western stuff plays in Russia all the time. And the reason for that is, is that Russia is actually more Western than you might imagine. Are you from Russia? No, no, I'm from England, America! What's up guys, it is your boy Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian, and in today's video, I want to talk about how the lives of Russians, in many ways, are really not that different from the lives of your average Westerner. I mean, look guys, obviously on this channel I talk about Russian propaganda and everything, and there are things in Russia that definitely don't make life in Russia the same as it is in the West, especially when it comes to free speech and so on. However, in this video I want to specifically talk about the regular lives of everyday people. And I also want to tell you guys about the fact that Russians really enjoy Western culture and Western goods, and a lot of the time I actually prefer Western culture and Western goods to Russian culture and Russian goods. Which also basically makes the entire new campaign of the Russian government to try to create the sort of new patriotic Z culture complete nonsense. So, first of all, let's mention the fact that Russians really love Western tech and Western things. For example, for the last 20 years or so, the most popular type of home decoration or furnishing in Russia has been the so-called Evraremont, which quite literally means European furnishing. You guys obviously know that the Soviet Union had a huge campaign of building affordable housing and building these so-called commie blocks, and obviously a lot of the people who got their apartments before the fall of the Soviet Union furnished their apartments in the time of the Soviet Union, so they had a very certain Soviet look to their places, right? You had the rugs on the wall, all sorts of crazy decorative furniture made of that particular Soviet type of wood, and when the Soviet Union fell apart and Russia actually started slowly and slowly getting economically better, people started renovating and buying apartments, and obviously, Russians wanted to leave all of that Soviet stuff behind and basically create new apartments for themselves that would be as nice as any modern apartment in the West. So a lot of the times in Russia, if you're trying to rent or buy an apartment, they would say that they have European furnishing as one of the benefits, meaning essentially that we have renovations that don't look like they were made by a Soviet grandma in 1965. <laughs> Same thing also follows, for example, with so-called Yevra Okna, which are essentially just plastic windows that are also something that you didn't really have back in the Soviet Union. Most of the people had wooden windows. So a lot of families in Russia after the fall of the Soviet Union went through this upgrade and changed their wooden windows to plastic windows. And these plastic windows are commonly known within the people as European windows. Yevra Okna. Once again, the whole idea is that they do stuff well in Europe, so we should bring that over here and bring that to our own houses. And the same pretty much also goes with tech and home appliances or whatever. Russians will always, and I mean always, prefer home appliances that are created in respectable countries of Europe that are known for their craftsmanship. For example, Germany. Russians overall have a huge obsession and a sort of a love for Germany, I would say, honestly. Russians absolutely love German stuff. Cars, obviously, you know, Mercedes, BMW, that is obviously huge in Russia. And, you know, in the 90s in Russia, which was a time of a lot of crime, a lot of the gangsters and, you know, the cool guys of that era would drive, you know, Mercedes and BMW, it was a sort of like a status symbol to have a sick-ass German car, you know, that's basically having a sick-ass German whip in the 90s in Russia is like the biggest flex ever, and it still is, because these cars are still a status symbol, and Russia still does not really produce any luxury vehicles, so to say, right, or I guess I could say they struggle to make any vehicles that anybody would pick if they actually had the money, because most of the time, if you have the money, you pick a foreign car, you would not buy a Russian car. 
And Russians know that their cars are kind of shit, and Russians don't like their cars, and you know, Russian cars, they're essentially one of the biggest jokes in Russia that everybody loves to talk shit about. However, when it comes to German cars and Japanese cars, American cars, etc., Russians really appreciate it. Russians long for it, because it's a status symbol. And once again, when it comes to home appliances, I mean, if a Russian person has the choice to either buy an electric kettle that will be made in Russia, or buy an electric kettle that will be made in Germany, I assure you... <laughs> 99.9 .9 people would pick a kettle made in Germany because Russians know that Europeans make things that last. It's just something that is ingrained in us because even back in the times of the Soviet Union, a lot of the stuff that came from Europe or so to say from more free countries of the Soviet bloc for example, Yugoslavia, a lot of the goods that were produced in Yugoslavia actually were very prestigious and also were sort of a status symbol in the Soviet Union. So, for example, if you were able to go on a trip to Yugoslavia and bring some clothes or something else from there, like a razor or something, you know, you were like a cool guy in the Soviet Union because you essentially had better stuff than anybody else because the Soviet people basically always wanted the goods that they could not get. For example, jeans or, you know, western clothing, etc. And that's essentially something that stayed in the Russian mindset. Because really, since the fall of the Soviet Union, Russia hasn't produced a lot of great alternatives to a lot of the products that the West offers. So still, even though we're currently in capitalism and, you know, Russia can make whatever it wants, right? A lot of Russian people would still prefer stuff made in the, you know, capitalist West as opposed to Soviet Russia. And this is absolute truth. And yes, even the biggest Z patriots of Russia, such as Shaman, are rocking Balenciaga boots. You know what I'm saying? And also, I mean, I don't even know how to make it more obvious. I mean, <sighs> look guys, I'm ha I have a whole setup here, right? All the stuff that I have in front of me, you can't see shit, okay? I have a monitor, speakers, this thing right here. All of this stuff I bought in Russia, like we have shit. You know what I'm saying? We live kind of like you. We also go to coffee shops. We also wake up to go to work and, you know, like it's the same fucking capitalist system as everywhere. Oh yeah, and also another reason why I decided to make this video is because when I was reacting to Tucker Carlson's shopping in a Russian grocery store, he was like amazed that, you know, Russians having food and bread in their stores, which was like, what do you guys expect? Like, what do you guys think grocery stores in Russia are like? <laughs> We're no longer in a Soviet Union. And this is something that surprised me, right, is that a lot of Westerners seem to think that somehow life in Russia is just so vastly different. Like, we live in a sort of a different civilization or something, and we obviously, you know, we reject everything Western, we reject, you know, the Western influence. But once again, that's not the case, because Russia and Russians, well, what can I say, they love Western culture. Russians love Western music, and they always have, even back in the Soviet Union people would listen to Western music. And every single boomer in Russia today, for example, they love to listen to Queen, for example, you know, Freddie Mercury. Even though Freddie Mercury was gay, also. This is also, by the way, getting back to that comment at the start of the video, which said that, how come they play George Michael in Russia if he was gay, and Russia is like banning gay people and stuff. It's funny, actually, because I had a huge argument with my family, with the men in my family, after we all watched Bohemian Rhapsody, the movie about Freddie Mercury. And the argument basically was around the fact that they all love his music, but also they all, like, dislike gay people. So I basically turned it into, like, a whole lecture to them about how, you know, gay people are also people. <laughs> but yes, like, I don't know, Russians love Western music, and if you go to Russia, if you turn on the radio, they're gonna be playing the latest hits from the West. So yes, they're gonna be playing, like, Dua Lipa, Miley Cyrus, or whatever, and Lil Nas X as well. Even though that artist would definitely be banned for LGBT propaganda in Russia, they still play it on the radio, because nobody, like, knows English, and nobody gives a shit. <laughs> So yes, when it comes to modern Western culture like Western music, Russians still consume that and listen to that on a daily basis. So this is why, you know, you should not be surprised by last Christmas being played in a Russian mall because this is not foreign to us, really, because we live in the same sort of global European culture, kind of, still. Russians love Western movies, American movies, British movies, Russians love Hollywood actors, they love Leonardo DiCaprio, they love, I don't know, Brad Pitt, fucking Tom Hanks. If you ask my mom to name some Western Hollywood actors, she would easily name you at least like 10-15. We watch this stuff, we know this stuff. And once again, actually, a lot of Russians, especially a lot of young Russians, actually refuse to watch Russian television, Russian movies, and Russian TV shows even, because they think it's bad and it also might have some certain underlying governmental propaganda behind it or something hidden somewhere in there. Not to say that Russia doesn't have good movies. Absolutely it does. It has a lot of great movies and directors. But a lot of commercial movies and TV shows in Russia are really terrible. And yes, a ton of people prefer Western movies and Western TV shows to Russian movies and Russian TV shows. Point is, Western culture gets into Russia pretty much without any restrictions still, and Russian people are eagerly consuming Western culture. 
And I would say this is exactly, in my opinion, the reason why, you know, Russia's entire narrative right now, this, you know, entire propaganda about how we need to, you know, remove ourselves from the degenerate West and build a civilization of our own with our own strong culture and everything, because everything Western and, you know, European and American is actually, you know, foreign to us and it's actually uh, destructive to the Russian gene. It is complete nonsense, and it's also not going to work, because Russians still, despite everything, despite even the, you know, insane situation in the world, Russians still love Western culture, they still watch Western movies and still listen to Western music, because Russia cannot exist in a vacuum, and it should not exist in a vacuum. Russia should be part of the European space, in my opinion. Because the way I look at Russian history, personally, is I believe that Russia has always been historically and culturally European. And I personally believe that the Russian Empire definitely was part of the European space, in a sense, right? However, I personally think that the revolution of 1917 and the later establishment of the Soviet Union, which created, you know, the Iron Curtain and sort of blocked Russia and the rest of the countries that were, you know, trapped in the Soviet Union from the rest of the world, that created this sort of divide which took Russian history, of course, in a sense, because Russia, instead of continuing to exist in this European space, started to exist, you know, outside of it. But I believe what they tried to do was a failure because the Russian people have always tried to access European and American and Western culture, even reaching through the Iron Curtain for it, you know? And right after the Soviet Union fell, Russians loved everything Western, American and European. They wanted all of it, and they wanted more of it, because I feel like the people just got to sort of be part of the civilization that they belong to again. And honestly, guys, yes, this is deep analysis, but I believe that the facts that last Christmas by Wham and <laughs> All I Want for Christmas is You plays in Russia in every single fucking mall for months and then also during holiday season ad nauseum shows that Russia is really not that different from being a part of the Western cultural sphere. So in my opinion, if people's minds were not poisoned with this militaristic propaganda and xenophobia, I really don't think Russians would have any trouble fitting into the European society, and the Russian youth, despite all odds, once again, is getting more and more westernized. With like every single year, and this is a process that you just can't stop. So yeah, what's the moral of this video? Basically, all I wanted to say is that Russia is really not that different from what you might imagine. Of course, we have a really bad situation with everything. <laughs> However, once again, when it comes to average day-to-day -day life, the average day of a Russian is not that much different from the average day of a Westerner. You visit the same websites, you eat the same crap, you listen to the same crap on the radio, basically. We're all part of the same capitalist system. Russia does not exist in some sort of vacuum where we don't get to listen to, you know, the blasphemous song Last Christmas per performed by the famous gay man, George Michael. Yes, definitely need to ban that shit. No. Nobody truly cares, and once again, if not for this propaganda, if not for the will of certain great people to exploit the people of Russia for, you know, their interests, we wouldn't have any of this, and Russians would probably have zero issue being friends with Europe and the West and the European Union and whatnot, right? So, uh, yeah, I just <laughs> decided to make this video after I got those comments about Mariah Carey, because I was like, Jesus Christ, do people really think that Russia is, like, this difference? What, like, what do you think that we do? Listen to Soviet songs 24-7 and eat? Eat fucking borscht. Get real, guys, okay? We are not that different. But anyways, guys, yeah, I guess that is going to be pretty much it today's video, though. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you guys did, then please make sure to slap that like button on this video. And as well, if you guys would like to support this channel, support me additionally, and that is financially, then go over to the link down in the description and become a YouTube member. It's basically like YouTube's own version of Patreon, it's a monthly donation and it's the best way to support me. Or if you want to do a one-time donation, then you can do a super thanks underneath this video. Thank you guys once again for watching, and I'll see you... In the next one. Peace.